Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church on Sunday, April the 18th. Let us take a moment to bow our heads and prepare for this morning's service. Offer me 
in the Lord. Then he went saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Let it up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, and at once I fall asleep, for you knew you were made me dwell in safety. Faithful defenders, do not let our hearts be troubled, but fill us with such confidence and joy that we may sleep in peace, rise in your life, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubt? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? He, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened up their minds to under, understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever been a witness to a trial? Uh, by definition, the word witness means one who has seen or heard something. One who fur furnishes evidence. So a witness is somebody who can say, I know this to be true. Now, I personally have never been a witness in a trial, but my husband Michael has been a witness many, many times. So I asked him what it was like to be a witness. And he said, basically, it's a roller coaster of emotions. He said, it's 
starts with kind of a nervous anticipation while you wait. Because you actually have to sit outside the courtroom until you are called. And then your name is called and the doors are open. And then he said there's this incredible awkwardness because as you walk into the courtroom, all eyes are on you. Then once on the stand, there's the stress of telling the truth and remembering everything that happened as best that you can. And then next comes the self-doubt because you are being cross-examined. So you, the, the, whether it be the prosecutor or the lawyer for the defense, they're challenging what you were saying. And then finally he said, when it's all said and done, there's a sense of peace. Peace of knowing that you have spoken the truth. Peace of knowing that you did the best that you could. Being a witness is hard and most definitely a roller coaster of emotions. Can you imagine what the disciples must have gone through? Jesus comes to them and says, Peace be with you. And then adds, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. The disciples spent three years with Jesus. They saw all the great things he did. They also saw how he was treated at the end. And now, as he stood before them, they were realizing everything that was in the scriptures was true. And that Jesus wanted them to be the ones to truly bear witness. And it wasn't enough just to tell people that Jesus rose from the dead and the tomb was empty. No. To be a true witness to Christ, they needed to live and breathe the resurrection. Experiencing a resurrected life and being a witness of Christ is about being able to recognize the risen Christ among each other. It's about being able to look at the people in your neighborhood, in your church, in your community, just the way Jesus looked at them and be an example for them as Jesus was. What Jesus asked of his disciples, he is also asking of us. He wants all of you to believe and to bear witness to his life and to his love. Now, if God isn't going to be sending us any angels to help us do this, we are doing this kind of on our own. Jesus wants us to show the world what it is like to believe in him and what it means to be a disciple. So we are God's witnesses. We are the ones presenting the evidence to the world, just as my husband presents evidence to the courts. We are to present the evidence of joy and happiness that Christ brings to us and to the world. I said we're kind of doing this on our own, but I want to share something with you. It's from Acts. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So really, we're not alone. The Holy Spirit empowered the disciples, and she also empowers us. We are filled with the Holy Spirit, if not once, but twice. You know, the Holy Spirit comes into us and graces us at our baptism. And if you are confirmed, there she is again. So we are spirit-filled witnesses. It is through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that we can help others see and understand God. However, being a true witness of Christ can be a roller coaster of emotion, just as being a witness in an actual trial can be. You know, there's the anticipation of knowing, okay, when should I speak? Knowing how should I act? That awkwardness of being called by God to do something, or even more of the denying that you're even being called. There's the stress of living the truth in Word, action, and deed. 
And then there's the fear of whether or not you're actually going to be understood or accepted. And then hopefully there is the joy and peace of knowing that you are living your truth. Again, I want to share a few things with you from the book of Acts. Luke saying to people, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all the witnesses to that act. Again, we hear, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. And lastly, the God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all humankind of what you have seen and heard. These words speak to us just as much as they spoke to the people that Luke was talking to. We are called to be witnesses of Christ. A witness of Christ is someone who tells the truth about Jesus. The, di the disciples testified to all things they knew to be true about Jesus. And above all, they testified to the truth of Jesus' resurrection. And that's what we are called to do. Sometimes people think, that uh, being a witness to Christ means that we have to go running around trying to convert people. And really, that's not our job to convince people. We are here to be witnesses of Christ. We cannot force someone to believe. We cannot force someone to convert. We cannot bring someone to Christ that does not want to be brought to Christ. Just like in an actual trial, you know, a jury and a judge, they will listen to the evidence, they will weigh the facts about against their own experiences that they may know, and then they will decide in their own opinion whether or not they believe what is being said. As witnesses of Christ, we are called to do a few things. Be honest, first and foremost. Be an example. And when I say example, I mean demonstrate compassion, understanding, forgiveness, humility, selflessness. Be supportive. Talk about your faith. So many times people are scared to talk about their faith. I've had people say to me, you know, I, you know what, I don't like talking about my faith because I, I feel like I'm imposing. You're not imposing. You're having a conversation. And believe me, if somebody doesn't want to hear you talk about God, they will tell you that. Don't be scared to share your faith. Answer questions. And you know what? If somebody asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, just say, you know what? That's an awesome question. Honestly, I don't know the answer. Let me, let me call my parish priest and maybe see if she knows it. I'll do some more. Figure it out for you. Be patient. Jesus was incredibly patient. And I think we need to demonstrate that patience as well. And I think pray. Pray for people to hear the words of God. Saint Monica, she was the mother of Saint Augustine. For 17 years, she prayed on a daily basis for her son to finally believe in God and to become a Christian. After 17 years of daily prayer, Augustine answered God's call. Not only did Augustine convert to Christianity, ultimately, um, he ended up becoming a bishop and is actually a renowned theologian and is recognized as one of the early church fathers. Point is, Monica was an incredibly patient woman she lived by example. She was supportive and she prayed. And when Augustus was ready, God did great things. We cannot force anyone to believe. A good thing to always remember is that we're not God. So speak the truth about Jesus. Let people know how 
he has changed your life, how he lives in you. And then step aside and let God do God's work. Another thing I think is really important that we remember when being a witness to Christ is that there needs to be a sense of loyalty. And what I mean by that is we need to stand up for what's right, even when it's incredibly hard and scary. We can't turn our back on God when our faith is being confronted. I think of the Good Samaritan with this, you know, unlike the priest and the Levite who left the beaten man on the side of the road. The Samaritan stopped. He didn't worry about what others thought. He didn't worry about what might happen to him if he stopped and helped this man. And he didn't worry about that he might be late to where he was going. He did what was right despite what might happen to him. He's an amazing example of what it is to be Christ-like and to be a witness of Christ, showing compassion and selflessness and standing up for what is right. Being a witness to Christ can be challenging and scary, but Jesus made sure that we have great examples. We have him. We have the disciples. And just as Jesus gave the disciples the Holy Spirit, he also gave her to us. Being a witness to Christ is like kind of riding a roller coaster. You have your ups and your downs and your twists and your turns. And yes, your emotions can be all over the place. But in the end, being a witness to Christ will bring you nothing but incredible joy and fulfillment. So get on the roller coaster and enjoy the ride. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under precious power, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. It is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us lift up the church and the world to our Father in the Lord, whose death and resurrection has fulfilled the law and prophets and psalms. Let us pray in confidence, saying, Lord, have mercy. God of the church, the risen Christ, open the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. May the church find in the scriptures healing, mission, and good news for all. We give thanks for Bishop Susan, for Joey, our minister, that in the power of the Spirit, they may be signs of God's love, joy, and peace. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Life-giving God, your Son, Jesus Christ, showed wounded hands and feet to his unbelieving apostles. May we see the risen one in all the one wounded of the world. Let us, and all in authority, heed the call for justice in the church, in our community, and in the nation.
Let us pray. Lord, hear her strength. God of wisdom, bring the sense of your living presence. Renew us in the faith you want us to have, a faith that is not afraid to reach out in your name and to share the treasure you have given us in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, hear her prayer. Creator God, sustainer of all, we thank you for the beauty of your creation, especially during the month of Earth Day, and for giving us the privilege of caring for it. We confess that we have not cared for the Earth with the self-sacrificing and nourishing love that you require of us. We mourn the broken relationships in creation that has led to climate change. We pray with hope because you are already at work through Christ to reconcile all things. Let us pray. Eternal God, to whom, to whom may all come through your Son, lay your healing hand upon all those who are sick. Make your loving presence known to those who are lonely. Give your strengthening power to those who are weak. May those who lack be filled, those who mourn be comforted, and those who seek forgiveness find it in Jesus Christ. We lift up all those who are placed on our hearts. We pray for Elizabeth, Jean, Lois, Louise, Matt, Alan, Brett, Tammy, Pam, Mary, Colin, Baby Axel, Ruth, and Martin. Keep them strong and hopeful in their time of need. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. God of hope, your son Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We rejoice with all who have entered into the fullness of life eternal. May we with them have a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for your servant Simon Bellinger. May we may he rest in peace. Let us pray. Loving God, you have glorified your son Jesus and given him the name by which we have are saved. Give us the courage to act in his name. Accept our praise offered in his name. For we offer this prayer through and with and in Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, 
we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these generous doings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you and deliver you from your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you at home. Let us pray. Creator of all, you wash away our sins in water. You give us new birth by the Spirit and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right in our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very pastoral lamb, which was offered for us, and has taken away the sin of the world, and who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Let there be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death by the cross for our redemption. Who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and could institute in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of his precious, precious death and resurrection until this coming again. Hear, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we are receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution. In remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious blood of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of thy holy bread of eternal life, and cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he has commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through the faith in his blood, that we and all the whole church may obtain remission for our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, Almighty Father, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, for those of you who cannot be here in person, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim and reign. Come to us, O men, and make us one in you. Amen.
Let us pray. Author of life divine, in the breaking of bread, we know the risen Lord. Feed us always in these mysteries, that we may show your glory to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of thy most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs in hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies, to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit we all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. There is just one announcement, and hopefully I haven't lost it. Oh, it has to do with our gift baskets. So they're all put together now. Thank you for everybody who supported and adopted a basket. I greatly appreciate it. Um, the online option is going to be up and running um, starting April 24th to May 1st. Um, the winners will be announced May 2nd. Your choices for baskets. So we have the pandemic basket, pandemic party basket, we have the wine basket, that's the one I'm getting on. The movie night basket, the local lovelies, the afternoon tea, the beach day, all Canadian, date night, and of course there's one for kids. So I do hope that you will support us in this basket option and uh, yeah, let's have some fun with this. Our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful week, everyone.